In this video, I want to talk about my experience living in Lagos, Nigeria as a woman. Because I know that some of you guys asked it and I asked if you guys wanted a story time of my life experience in, in Papua New Guinea. Ladies and gentlemen, I am back again with another video because I promised to do this video. And this is that video I talked about in my previous video. I told you guys about a country at the Pacific Ocean that has so much in common with Nigeria. I stumbled on this country because I have been doing research. I wanted to understand how to help how a region that wants to break free from their country for instance like in my country we have a region like the eastern nigeria that some not all easterners are agitating for their own their own country which which has been on for a very long time and i feel like why haven't the easterners been able to achieve biafra do you understand because i've heard of south sudan and south korea that broke free from North Korea and also from Sudan. So I, I took to the internet to do research to see if I can help. I wanted to know the process of how people get to become a sovereign state. What and what these other countries did that helped them achieve that, that the Easterners in my country are, are unable to do, to achieve this age-long desire of theirs. Because I feel like at this point, it is their right. You want to go, you should go. So what are the process of going? I feel like maybe there's something they are supposed to do that they haven't done. So I took to the internet trying to know what these other countries are doing to get to freedom from their former countries to become sovereign states. While on it, I got a suggested video on YouTube from a country called Papua New Guinea. When I clicked on it, it was Nas Daily. You know Nas. Nas will never make a situation bad, no matter how horrible it is. So while on that, I stumbled on a documentary about that country, Papua New Guinea, by a British journalist. In the documentary, the actual gang that used to RAPE women and car snatched and even by women and even by whoever they want to came on camera they are not afraid they came on camera they said they want to demonstrate they want to repeat how they do it behind the scenes and the journalist was marvel like really you want to put your face yeah they say they don't care yeah that is how it is any woman that do they like they see you they, they are apu and nothing happens though their prison is fully stocked and i'll show you in this video stock is full plenty so i thought maybe the usual thing now Ibo used to according to some black people they accuse Ibo of everything you can't your wife is believing god for a child now Ibo kosam your government mismanaged resources now we book some you do this one they say more you when come establish school oh, for your country when give you education to gain knowledge gain scholarship to go abroad study and become independent to be able to make ends meet for yourself to stay out of trouble you say that then they cause your problem so due to that i felt like maybe the british journalist is being biased i wanted to see more videos from that side and that was how i stumbled on this video that i'm going to play here for you guys to see she's not the only one i stumbled on so many videos from people around that country and so i wanted to know more the deeper i go like i get lost i could see nigeria in clear picture country is packed with natural resources rich it is blessed beyond your imagination and they have vast languages and ethnic groups just like my country nigeria and they also have commonest thing in common which is their hatred for women especially women and children so that got me interested i wanted to know you know it's consoling to know that you're not the only bad person right like my people say it's not only in nigeria that i do this one this one too it do harm me so that yastic for bad behavior to help reduce your conscience there are other people too so you want to know more about them right so i went further 
to get to know more about this country and everything about the country is i won't lie to you charlie may god in heaven oh, let my life have to be depend on this country because i don't want to go there i don't want to have anything to do with them now if you're from there i don't hate you because what about the people that are being our ape what about these women what about the innocent ones because as bad as bad as the country may be there are a couple of persons that are good so i can't hate you just because you're from there but trust me i don't think i want to have anything to do with your country because it is so much alike like nigeria that is that would be like me escaping from fire to hell hell is permanent fire could be temporary but hell is permanent so that gave me a perfect reason to do this video so that i can show you how women are living the similarity between papua new guinea and nigeria so I think we should start from home because charity begins at home so I'm going to start with this video of a British Nigerian girl who has no fear of favor because trust me she's she's okay without views she's okay without collecting anything from anybody she's a British and well educated and grounded financially she's just that smart London girl that wants to give her apartment for rent so she could make some money and then travel the world while traveling she's making her money from her apartments that is what i think because she said it um, at the end of the video so let's take a look at her experience in nigeria then i'll take a look at paula experience in papua new guinea let's start with my nigerian sister let's go in this video i want to talk about my experience living in lagos nigeria as a woman i've had a few comments since sharing that i moved back to nigeria i've had other people reach out to me saying that they've been thinking about moving back living in nigeria has really altered my brain chemistry so yeah let's get into it i'm obviously going to be speaking from a woman's perspective because i think yeah that's that's the focus of this video the obvious one misogyny nigeria is still a very misogynistic country let's me just speak about lagos your experience varies based on where in nigeria you are there are multiple cities so i haven't been to all of them so i can't really speak on the whole country women are treated differently based on whether they are with a man or whether they are alone and i experienced this on multiple occasions especially driving in lagos alone as a woman i had some terrible experiences just the way men will speak to me assume that i don't know how to drive very well because i I'm a woman there was a time I was trying to get petrol and I had a group of men like banging on my car just being very aggressive and violent this leads me to my second point which is that living in Lagos doesn't allow you as a woman I'm not generalizing but I think in my experience it just didn't allow me to be soft you always have to be stern you always have to be assertive you can't be too friendly you can't be too smiley because you have to create boundaries with people and i think that boundary is very exhausting and certain things are still very backwards in the sense that the more affluent you appear to be that also comes with like a certain persona not being too open not speaking to everyone it's just weird where i was staying the accommodation i was staying in we had facility managers like staff who would help out with things in the estate there were times where where, you know I would obviously speak to them be very warm be very friendly the next day they will message me or call me asking for money or asking for something or some sort of favor or just like crossing a boundary if every situation is like that you are going to be taken advantage of I think for me it was very difficult to understand the line between being friendly and being taken advantage of what you end up doing is just shutting down you just end up being unapproachable not friendly that's not the kind of person that I want to be or that's not how I want to express myself on a daily basis you just have to be like assertive at all times because if you're not people will take advantage of you you have to portray this strong woman this is another thing as well because of my physique because i'm quite petite i feel like that added to how i was treated sometimes nigerians value like shape you know curve and if you present curve it portrays like present no 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 sis let me correct that quickly let me make you understand what she means by this she's not talking about curve like say you get you know you look so nice you know like kim kardashian no 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 that's not it she mean fat if you are fat you eat <laughs> if you are a fat woman so in nigeria you you're a big girl like not to disrespect plus size people 
she's being too polite i understand i am that typical nigerian she is not she is just struggling to be you know to survive in nigeria so she's managing words no that's not what you mean like what she means is just in case you feel oh i'm plus size and i'm not very curvy i can't go to lagos i mean i can't go to nigeria and excel no if you are fat like you big whether you get shape or you know get be fat eat a lot of food that is what she means so let's continue she's being too polite here i will help her say it because i know what she's talking about let's continue no offense if you're plus size okay i don't know if that makes sense but it's like the the curvier the bigger you are it's like there's a presence they um I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but the thinner you are, the almost invisible you become. So I think that also contributed to like some of my experiences. Oh my gosh, guys, it's raining. This is the thing about the UK. The weather was so good up until now, like suddenly it just started to rain. Customer service there as well. You go to a restaurant and the waiter greets you with the sternest face <laughs> and you're just thinking like, did I do something? That's why I always used to say in my vlogs, like I really appreciate when I come across staff in lagos who are just so welcoming and so open and like look happy to be doing their job even if you're smiling people will be thinking like why are you smiling for you leave the house already feeling anxious because you don't know what's going to happen and there are just a lot of things that like it feels like is set up <laughs> to irritate your day driving alone as a woman you know not knowing when or whether you're going to get stopped by a police and you have to be prepared to get into that like exchange why are we having constant checks from police and they are asking for bribe they're asking for money and you know they just want to make your life hell i've decided i don't feel comfortable driving in nigeria anymore only if i have to i will drive just get a driver get a driver it's not that expensive it will just make your life life easier this is a unique one but the experience of going to a market in nigeria um going to a market in other countries is meant to be uh you know like a fun experience like something cultural even in the uk we have the farmers markets on sundays or saturdays you get excited to go to the markets you see what you're gonna get places like asia going to like a traditional market is exciting it's cultural in nigeria it is one of the most frustrating things that you will experience living there. Most people don't even go to the markets themselves. They send someone. So like they send a helper. It's very normal to have like someone that you send to go and buy the things that you need in the market. I love a market experience. I love a good market experience. Having that exchange with the storeholders, like the whole experience, I love it so much until living in Nigeria. Honestly, it was the most frustrating thing. You would go to the market and you would get abused <laughs> i would get abused maybe because of my the way i speak the way i'm dressed like i'm not being sharp enough people were just rude i remember once i wore a, a like a mini skirt to the market don't ever do that do not ever wear a mini skirt to a market in nigeria you would get called a shewo which means a prostitute all types of derogatory terms so that was my lesson learned but even after that even when i you know changed the way i dressed to try and fit in more just my accent alone like people can easily tell that i'm not local even when i feel that i'm trying to fit in visiting the market to remind you that yeah you're, you're not really a part of us i'm nigerian but i'm not really nigerian there's just a, a certain way you carry yourself depending on the environment and because i haven't been in those environments i'm not used to being that way the way that's expected of you as much as i'm nigerian i still had so many foreign experiences living there a lot of us who have grown up outside of of our country of heritage you often create ways to connect the reality for me was just very different to how i had imagined i would be um, embraced to be honest it wasn't all negative i met some amazing people people who did embrace me overall yeah i definitely felt like i don't completely fit in here some of you asked you know why nigeria why did i even move to nigeria in the first place i have dual nationality i'm british and nigerian i can decide to live in nigeria for however long i want and when i get fed up i can also decide to go back to the uk and i've always wanted to live in a country where i didn't feel like i stood out i just thought it would be easier for me but honestly no in my head i kind of romanticized a lot of things about living in nigeria 
it was from a place of privilege if I'm totally honest with you I don't have the same experience as the average Nigerian who grew up there I was raised in the UK I also lived in Korea for two years that has like significantly shaped me as well of course there are similarities like so many similarities I think I had someone reach out to me saying that they're moving to Nigeria alone without knowing anyone I had family there so if anything I was always calling my uncle my uncle was always helping me out with things I could not imagine living there alone without knowing anyone there are obviously people who are very honest very straightforward but there are also a lot of dishonest people so you may have to go through some bad eggs before you find your community haven't seen her experience in nigeria as a woman let's take a look at a woman experience in papua new guinea if you guys wanted a story time of my life experience in the not in the philippines but in papua new guinea i'll just do it in this video in this vlog because i just don't feel like doing another separate video for it because there's really honestly there's really not much to tell about it but i will try and explain or share with you guys my experience there everything that i can remember so far let's go back 2000 and and no not even 2000 1996 so in 1996 my mom my mama decided to go to Papua New Guinea to be a teacher so she she was a teacher here or not here but in the Philippines she was a teacher in Pasig Catholic College PCC do you know Garden? I don't know out of all the countries but she chose Papua New Guinea maybe that's maybe they were hiring teachers there so oh my goodness Alex is waking up so in 1996 my mom went to Papua New Guinea first and then three months after my dad my brother and I we followed afterwards and we lived there for eight years so I started my grade one up until seventh grade, which is like second year high school. And then I did fourth year high school here, not here. Why am I thinking like I'm in the Philippines? I did my fourth year high school in the Philippines. So from first grade to seventh year, um, I did school in Papua New Guinea. What was life like there? It was crazy. It was really scary. I went into a school where, you know, it was an international school. That's the reason why I can speak English fluently. I'm not. So it was a very, very memorable country for me and it will always be. None of my class classmates are there anymore because they all graduated and they're all back, you know, in their own home countries. I left when I was around 15 years old. I left because my mom passed away. All I can remember is that that place, it was really scary to be honest because we lived in a compound. It was called Ayura National High School. We lived in a separate compound from where my international school was. So kind of feeling. So I just felt like I didn't belong with them. So yeah, my mom was a teacher there. She was teaching math. <laughs> which is kind of funny. Why are you laughing? Which is kind of funny because I suck at math. I am not good at math at all. Excuse me, I'm trying to tell a story here. <laughs> so what would happen is that every two years, my family and I, we would head back to the Philippines to spend Christmas. It would always be December. Every two years, we would go home to spend some time with the family, December time, and then by January, end of January, we would come back to Papua New Guinea. Why do I say that it's scary and why? It was a different experience for me. It was a scary experience because there were times when my mom's students were not happy with her because she became a dean as well. So she became head of the girls and there was a girls dorm and there was a boys dorm. So sometimes, you know, she would find out that there was a boy in the girls dorm and obviously as a dean, you're in charge. You should do something about it. So when she did something about it, the boys would get upset. And guys, guys, my goodness. I remember there was a night when boys at night started throwing rocks at our house and it was like crazy. I remember just like ducking because I was so freaking scared. Local men were like throwing rocks at our house. And so what my parents did is we had this alarm and you know, the guard or you know, the police or the guard of that campus where we live and help us. You guys, I, I don't remember how many times we had to blare that alarm for asking for help because of these situations. But it was not, for me, it was not a very safe country to live in, especially for women. And I've watched documentaries of Papua New Guinea where women, just have no rights they don't have any say um, because they're women and i don't know if that has changed i have no idea but i watched documentary about that the other year <laughs> not the other week the other year and it's crazy when me and marco were watching it i'm like yeah that's exactly it that's how it is in papua new guinea it hasn't changed sweetheart that was how i found the twin brother of nigeria papa new guinea Papa New Guinea. And guess what? She's saying all these things. I'm going to display some things on the screen. Let's take a look at that and I'll be back. Mm -hmm. 
ulo daw. Nagkakabulan na naman. Shit! Naku! Ay, shit! Ano Naku! Ay, shit! That is a foreign woman being attacked. She's not the target. It's just like things that can happen in my own country where they just go and read. People just do what they like. And if you fall victim, it's your luck. Imagine a woman and her young children in a vehicle going through that. May this never be your portion. And I know Nigerians will be watching this video. It's paining me when you talk about my country like that. It's paining you. No, it never pain you. Now the day when it go happen to you, now that day it go pain you. And I pray, say one day you go be in that situation, then you go understand. I told you guys I was going to display some more things about Papua New Guinea um, and the similarity that they have with Nigeria. Just check out their prison. Let's take a look at that quickly and I'll be back. Let's go. You know the annoying thing for me, these people, the citizens of these countries claim we love our country, we proud of our country. Ooh, whereas you aren't being nice to your country. How do you love your country? Tell me, I don't understand. How? How does it work? I thought that if you love someone, you're supposed to treat them right. You're supposed to be nice to them. You're supposed to be nice to the land. So how do you love? So that is how I found a country. And trust me, I won't be surprised that they are Nigerians in Papua New Guinea. So I have been on their case. I'm still on them because I want to know more because the similarity between Papua New Guinea and Nigeria, it is just to die for. Like it is so much. They are alike in everything. So I wanted to know why they hate their women. So I watched a documentary where once a boy grows to a certain age, there is a cage room for where they groom you. Once you come out of there, you will see women in a different light most of the traditions in Papua New Guinea do that I'm still watching documentaries from there the sad part is just like my country it's only Nigerians that make videos about the country hey we love our country our country he good he good they are the only ones all the foreigners that comes in there don't have anything good to say about Papua New Guinea just like Nigeria so dear Nigerians have found your brother country just that it is a bit far away and they're as mean as you are towards your women and i don't think this is ever going to change okay i told you guys i was beaten by a nigerian man because his sister told him to come and beat me and he did and what did no, up to now nothing has happened the sister is going on to contest for the chairman of my local government <laughs> A country called Nigeria. I'm still on you guys, okay? I will continue to tell the stories from there so that the world can see the truth about my country. I am done for today. I will see you guys in another one.